Buffett has also come out and said that he wants to ensure that he pays as much of his estate tax as possible, but still leaving an inheritance behind for his kids and grandkids. The way he puts it is that he wants them to leave. He, he wants to leave them with enough to do anything they'd like, but not so much that they get entitled and lazy. This is what we like to call the Goldilocks zone of universal basic income. Warren Buffett's plan for his kid ap kids after he dies is basically to set them up with a personal trust fund UBI. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. Uh, before we get into this episode, I want to tell you guys about some really awesome virtual shows coming up and really awesome live in-person shows coming up as well. Uh, if you enjoy these podcast episodes, if you enjoy the Fork Full of Noodles, I write, produce, and record them on the last Thursday of each and every month. The last Thursday of each and every month, it's a whole new show, and you can be in the virtual audience via Zoom every single month. Tickets are available for these shows right now. I'm also producing virtual stand-up comedy shows where I work on new material, tell stories from the road, tell stories from my life. That'll eventually become material that you'll see me perform live on in-person shows. So if you want to come kind of see the process and enjoy uh, a more casual, laid-back stand-up comedy show uh, via Zoom or, or, over, or on a in a virtual setting, you can be anywhere in the world for these, these virtual shows. Uh, come check those shows out. Uh, those ticket links are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, I'm also going to be on the road with Ron Placone for a week and a half, two weeks, uh, somewhere on there in April, from April 16th through the 25th. On the road with Ron Placone, we're coming to Pittsburgh, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Burlington, Portland, Maine, Boston, Massachusetts, and New York City. So if you're in those cities or in cities surrounding those areas, please do come hang out with us. Grab your tickets. Again, you can go directly to my website, which is krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. I hope to see some of you guys there. Uh, and while you're on my website, you can check out my stand-up comedy albums, most of which are available to download for free. Uh, you can also make donations, one-time donations, or become sustaining members. If you make monthly contributions, uh, you get a ton of bonus stuff, which includes uh, free tickets to both in-person shows and virtual shows as well plus bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content and a bunch of other really cool surprises. Uh, so check that out, uh, and you can also sign up for my email list. And that's important because I'm pulling back from how much I'm posting on social media. Uh, I, I started just kind of automatically doing that, and that has been a great help to my mental health and has helped me focus more on my writing, has helped me focus more on uh, rebuilding my personal relationships and improving not just my mental health, but also my physical health as well, because I can concentrate a little bit more on that. So the email list is a really, really great way to keep up to date on what I'm doing. To, uh, re re email me back about you know what what you think about a particular piece or so on and so forth so i hope you do that again go to my website krishmohanhaha.com it's k r i s h m o h a n h a h a .com thank you guys so much and now on to the episode now every single billionaire has benefited greatly by the crooked and corrupt legal tax system that allows things like trusts, sports teams, horse farms, and other assets, including their own children, to evade their taxes. Or they have offshore accounts. 
But because we live in a capitalist system where money defines your intelligence and talent, we still believe that billionaires are good people. Or at least some of them are. Uh, someone like Elon Musk is spending more of their time trolling on Twitter than they are doing whatever the fuck Elon Musk uh, does. You know, but for example, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett is a billionaire who has repeatedly said that his class should pay more in taxes, right? Buffett has been pushing for Congress to increase the income tax rate for billionaires for years. In fact, in 2011, President Obama was going to pass Buffett's law, which would have increased the income tax rate for the rich. Seems nice, right? Now, I want to make this very clear. This is very different from Buffet's law. Uh, which would make us all eat at least one of our meals as a buffet, which seems intrusive and very unhealthy. And it's staggeringly different than Buffy's law, which states, fuck Angel. Seems aggressive, but if you know Buffy, kind of romantic too, you know, kind of, kind of nice. The only problem with this is that it would it would have still allowed these billionaires to hide their wealth in untaxed assets and claim things like entire sports teams as depreciating assets. And it completely ignores what to do about tax havens like the Caribbean and South Dakota. Buffett has also come out and said that he wants to ensure that he pays as much of his estate tax as possible, but still leaving an inheritance behind for his kids and grandkids. The way he puts it is that he wants them to leave. He, he wants to leave them with enough to do anything they'd like, but not so much that they get entitled and lazy. This is what we like to call the Goldilocks zone of universal basic income. Warren Buffett's plan for his kid ap kids after he dies is basically to set them up with a personal trust fund UBI. And this is a very blatant example of socialism for the rich. He's also an is a uh, immensely philanthropic billionaire. I write these big words that I can't say. <laughs> but he wants to ensure that when he dies, a large portion of his wealth goes to charitable causes that he believes in. Now, I'm sure we can go into the specifics of these charities and the issues with the charitable industrial complex and the nonprofit world, but that's not the point I want to make here. It's a whole different hour and a half show. Right. Those are problems. But the issue I have with Buffett's methodology is that he's still using these philanthropic endeavors to pay less in taxes. The organizations have loopholes for the extremely rich and wealthy. Right. People like Buffett and even Twitter's Jack Dorsey set up a charity company to put their money into and base that organization in tax haven states like South Dakota and Delaware. So if someone like Warren Buffett really wanted to show this system why taxing billionaires would be beneficial to Americans, then he should just give the middle finger to the system by directly donating to grassroots efforts that have a direct impact on people's lives rather than this weird roundabout philanthropy. If Warren Buffett took the money, he, he knows that he should be paying in taxes and gave it away without a proxy charity to projects that vastly improved the lives of the American people, he'd prove how and why taxing the rich and erasing these leap loopholes would be highly beneficial to America, freedom, and democracy. Think of how, how much good someone like Warren Buffett could do if he donated even $1 million to a mutual aid organization in every single state. He would be out $50 million, but he would still have a metric fuck ton of dollars left. Let me double check that. Yeah, it's a metric fuck ton of dollars. Yeah, mutual aids across the country have done more good for the American people by feeding, clothing, and taking care of them than the American government or any billionaire ever has. But this doesn't prove, this doesn't provide any sort of massive tax benefit. So there's no incentive for billionaires like Buffett to do so. Then you have CEOs like Dan Price, who cut their own personal salary to ensure that every employee's starting salary was $70,000 back in 2018. Now, conservatives shouted that this would mean it was the end of his company, but it was quite the opposite. The morale rose, the company made more money, and it increased its client base, and now employees are making over $100,000 a year. And as nice it is, is, as it is to see charitable and more understanding rich folks, I always see stories like this with a little bit of skepticism. 
not only for the reasons that I've already listed, but also because billionaires like E.W. Scripps existed. Scripps was a, a newspaper tycoon who sold his paper for a penny to help the working class stay informed. He would go after the billionaire class of his time and take them down several pegs. I also understand that the term tycoon isn't really used in our vernacular these days. You know, unless you're referring to the kids who got way into, you know, like roller coaster tycoon. And that they made like a crown of Cheetos and you know, spent most of their time decreeing things about corn dogs. This happened to a friend of mine. Dude. I'm speaking about a friend of mine. But Scripps went after the, the people trying to slash the estate tax, right? He feared his kids would become, quote, unutterable snobs if they inherited all his wealth. Here's how he viewed the class system. He said, quote, I don't I didn't count myself as a friend of the poor. I counted myself as the antagonist of the foolish members of my own class. He presented himself as a self-hating billionaire. Scripps wanted to tax the rich at a higher rate in order to pay for World War I, right? Woodrow Wilson did pass an estate tax of 10%, which quickly rose to 40% in two years, thanks to the good old war effort. All other tycoons, roller coaster or otherwise, wanted to reduce their taxes and just have us poors pay foot the bill. And maybe they started realizing that, you know, paying for war is not great. But then they just realized they could control every inch of American democracy to ensure that they never have to be the ones that ever pay for the wars uh, to steal the resources that don't belong to them. So good for them. Now, Scripps was writing stories about how this royal class would evade their taxes and what tricks they used to stay tax free. But after World War I, Scripps realized that his efforts were starting to screw him out of his own personal wealth. So he went to President Harding and convinced him to reduce taxes on the rich and confess that he used the same tricks he criticized others of avoiding to pay taxes. As much as he chastised his fellow oligarchs for using trust to evade uh, the estate tax, that's exactly what he was doing. He also gave his female heirs one half of what he gave his male heirs. What a stand-up guy. Now, take away from the script story here is that he wasn't fighting for us. He was fighting against other billionaires for his own personal gain. He was always fighting for himself, despite what he printed in his newspapers. This makes me skeptical of rich people like Warren Buffett and Dan Price, especially when they act philanthropically. Are they actually fighting for us or just against other billionaires? And what incentives are they getting in the back end for screwing other billionaires? And, and yes, you're right. This does sound exactly like the game of Monopoly because that's exactly how this economy is set up. It's set up like a board game, except you know no one ever passes go and, and most people are in prison and the railroads are like always on fire. Now, the silver lining from the script story is that he did show how good journalism can expose the corrupt rot of our system and drive positive change. But this kind of investigative journalism is proving to become dangerous. Billionaires tend to get very defensive when it comes to questions about their wealth and earnings. When, they, when asked if they believe it's fair that they paid little to no taxes, they get angry and basically say, yeah, they do believe it's fair. Some billionaires actually claim publishing tax inf information is a violation of privacy. But then how do we know they paid what they actually owed based on like real math, right? Right now, American math is just warped and mutated in an experimental version of math where percentages don't mean what they used to anymore. You know, we're supposed to take these math ma manipulating malcontents on their word Look, a billionaire's word is worth as much as the minimum wage they peddle. In a lot of instances, journalists that investigate these type of stories are threatened with legal action. And most of these investigative journalists are funded by their readers and don't have large corporations backing their stories. So they can't afford a lawyer to fight back against a billionaire who has a legal team the size of the sports team that they own. 
I'm sure the lawyers are considered a depreciating asset too. But this practice of billionaires attacking journalists is as old as, well, old money. In 1924, the Boston Globe published what the, ri what the richest men in America paid in taxes. The rich lost their minds and attacked the papers. Progressive presidential candidate Robert Fightin' Bob LaFollette said taxes are public information and should be available to the public. He added, quote, dishonesty and crime thrive in the dark. Now, this explains why the rich today are scurrying off to space. It's the darkest place they know, and thus they can avoid all the taxes and live on wealth by buying the very concept of the universe itself. The Boston Globe and any other paper that published the richest tax information were attacked by large corporate newspapers like the New York Times. Eventually, the Department of Justice gets involved and brings up charges on the papers that publish this information. This opens a court case, but both the lower courts and the Supreme Court sided with the papers, at which point Congress wrote a law restricting the investigation on, of taxes on the rich. But don't worry, you guys, okay? They will be auditing the ever-living shit out of the poor. You know, so, like, justice is a word we've all kind of heard of. So what the hell can we do to bring down these financial juggernauts, right? Well, Congress has a plan to increase the top-tier income tax to 40%. This will prove to be just as effective as the time 400 lawmakers decided to make a video to Jeff Bezos saying, hey, uh, be nice. OK, you're not you're not being nice right now. And, and we don't like that. So so we're just going to give you puppy eyes and maybe like a really long hug. Uh, and, and that and that maybe then you'll think about being being nice. Look, if you're going to use legislation to drive positive change for the most amount of people, then fucking do that, right? Reverse the law that separates assets from income so that rich people can't hide behind their stocks, bonds, sports teams, and trusts. And then tax them at like 90%, similar to what FDR and Eisenhower did. And yes, this will expose how bought and sold the American election system is, which then further reduces the control of capitalism on democracy, which is objectively a good thing if you believe in, like, you know, democracy. And if the rich protest this decision, which I assume that they will, will say, fine, it's okay, you can keep things as they are, but we now take your genitals. So no more spawning and expanding the corporate oligarchy through lineage, right? If you're going to have to do that, you're going to have to find like a sociopath to groom, which is just going to be a PR nightmare because that kid is probably going to kill like a lot of animals, so many animals. It's going to be real bad. And then your stock prices are going to plummet. But, and, then, and then at that point, you'll, you'll probably join the ranks of the poor. And, and at that point, you get to have your genitals back. But... You won't be able to afford the laser surgery to reattach it in place. And that's called the circle of fucking their lives. So which one of these lesser of two evils would the billionaires like to go with? I'll wait till we make our decision. Look, if that's too extreme, uh, then perhaps the millionaire surtax will be more up to speed. This taxes both, uh, both assets and income of anyone making more than $2 million a year. And if you guffawed at that statement, then you have way too much money and just want to hoard it all and confirm your own sociopathy. Look, a $2 million salary is still astronomical. It's enough money that you don't have to worry about money because of its absurd abundance. 76% of independents and moderates and 57% of Trumpers plus 53% of Republicans are for this tax. All that's getting in the way is the political will of politicians who have their official address listed as the pockets of the rich corporate oligarchs.
Another hurdle to get over is the love affair a majority of people have with billionaires. And again, that goes back to looking at them as individually wealthy by virtue of hard work and bootstrap pulling. So Oxfam, a tax organization, has a very easy way to dissuade people of that myth. They want to set up a public registry of banks, trusts, shell corporations, assets, and track revenue and finances. They also want to enact a global blacklist of tax havens, right? Looks like Delaware and South Dakota have to figure out a different way to get people and businesses to come there. Oxfam also wants to increase the corporate tax to 25%. And before someone screams inflation, remember that prices are already inflated and continue to become even more inflated without taxing the rich. That means that inflation is created by the rich to stay rich and has nothing to do with their tax rate or our minimum wage. Solutions like this redistribute the enormous wealth that already exists to things we need. Now, we are seeing a shift in the consciousness of the working class. Since the pandemic that enriched the already rich started, we've seen an exponential rise in strikes and labor action. It's more possible than ever to push politicians to start taxing and redistributing that hoarded wealth back to the people. Look, we shamed average people for that hoarded toilet paper in the beginning of the pandemic. So why aren't we shaming billionaires for hoarding wealth the way they are for centuries? Billionaires are cowards, unwilling to act for the public good because it means that they won't be richer than God anymore. They speak and act out of fear of not being able to send an astro astrological dick pic with a rocket. No one should want to be a billionaire, especially if you believe in de democracy. Being a billionaire is undemocratic. Democracy is built on the idea that it's equality for everyone. Avoiding taxes, amassing obscene levels of wealth, and hoarding it helps no one except those cowardly billionaires. The end. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Forkful of Noodles. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a big old thumbs up, uh, a retweet, or, and, and share this out with as many people as you can. Share it with a friend. Share it with an enemy. Share it with anybody that you think would find some kind of value from this episode. Uh, the, the focus of this channel is and always will continue to be a, a historical and psychological lens on various sociopolitical topics, and I will do my best to uh, break them down and and uh, add add some comedic flavor so we can <laughs> we can all enjoy uh, the the depressing information that that uh, uh, that we all kind of have to contend with and hopefully drive positive change in our lives. So if you enjoyed that, if you if that that is uh, a goal that you enjoy, please, please do hit the like button. Please do make sure that you're subscribed to my channels. Uh, and please do share this out with as many people as you can. Uh, and if you want to become a sustaining member, make a one-time donation, um, come to a virtual show, come to an in-person live show, and want to know when I'm coming to a city near you, you can do so directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Uh, I post videos on this channel uh, every Monday, every Thursday, and then infrequently throughout the weeks as well. Uh, so please do make sure you're subscribed. Please do make sure you're on the email list to get uh, new information from me and, and just a list of all the videos I've produced throughout the week. Uh, so uh, that, again, all of that is available directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, but till then, thank you guys for tuning in. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other, and we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.